Coming from the Caveman Studios in Buffalo, New York. Welcome to Caveman Corner with your host, Jeff. Captain Caveman! Thanks. Click subscribe and the bell. Do it now! I'm here with the man, the myth, the legend, Todd Banks, who's in the pool. Looks like there's a giant American popsicle behind you. Oh, Todd Banks is gone. <laughs> as soon as I started, he left. Oh, man, you got out of the pool for this? I appreciate you getting out of the pool for this podcast. Yeah, of course. Felt a little comfortable I, in the chair. <laughs> How you feeling, Todd? I feel good. How are you? Good, man. I am excellent. Um, you are fighting K4 August 3rd, and you are fighting for the Muay Thai title. How's that feel? Uh, it feels great. I can't lie. I feel really, feel really blessed and grateful for this opportunity. Man, you've come a long way. I've watched you pretty much from the start of your career all the way into amateur title contention, dude. And, uh, like, it's not a regular amateur title. It's a K4 title. So, like, that's a little bit different than, you know, fighting in some of the other promotions where they give you a title when you're, like, one and two, you know. Uh, you've put together a 5-0 run. You're undefeated. And uh, now you're fighting for a title. That's uh, that's pretty impressive. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, one of the, the best things about my job now uh, I get to watch all you guys come up and grow and, like, uh, getting over to, like, more of the broadcast and uh, commentary side. Like, I don't have to be in a ring with you guys getting beat up all the time. But uh, I started in the ring getting beat up by you, and uh, you came in and beat me up in my own gym. So, uh, like, it's <laughs> – Never that. Never that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's been uh, super good to uh, to watch you grow, dude, and I've watched you put on some serious, serious performances, and uh, they've been really amazing. Thank you. I think you. I think you've called like four out of five of my fights. Yeah, I I did not get to call the one in Vermont because uh, I was there. They wanted me to call your fight, but I'm like, man, I'm back here with Derek. I'm not gonna like. I came all the way to Vermont to corner Derek. I'm not gonna. Uh, no offense, like I would love to call your fight, but I'm not, I I went there for him. It's not for me. Yeah. You know, like That's commentating good. for me. It's not for uh, you know, it's not for anything else. I I went up there to to be there for Derek, and I wasn't gonna leave my locker room. But uh, I was glad I, that you went out there, and I got to watch you on the TV, the nice liver shot. Uh, it took you way longer than me, though. I just got to say, I did mine in four seconds. It took you like a whole half around to get yours. I got some catching up to do, man. <laughs> yeah, you got to come out there a little more aggressive. Uh, actually, that was that, that was your last fight, right? Yeah, yeah. That one you came out, you were like you you had a whole different pace. You fought like truly Muay Thai style. You started out really slow. You just found some holes, and then you, you just put them down, man. That was uh, pretty impressive, too. Yeah, man, he was he was he was good, man. He had 17 fights, and he he came out with that tie style, which I wasn't expecting. Like a lot of time, you uh, just my previous experiences, they might be tie fights, but they're not like that Thailand style. So it yeah. was it was the, definitely a puzzle to solve. I like that uh, K4 has really brought real Muay Thai to the area. Now you're starting to see guys. You, you're getting to see. Real Muay Thai fighting too, you know. It's not like K1 kickboxing with the clinch. It's it's really turning into Thai. Agreed. I've I I I've been, uh, I tell people all the time like Muay Thai in this area has like evolved. I don't know if it's because I've been in it or if it, but it just seems like K4 has brought it, like brought the level of Muay Thai here a lot higher. I don't want to ruin anything that people don't really know, but your clinch game has uh, really evolved as well. Is that supposed to be under wraps, or I don't? I don't want to throw anything away. I don't want to talk about it too much if it's uh, if it's going to throw away your game. But man, you are so much better in the clinch than uh, the last time I sparred with you. Your sweeps are tight. Like you feel good. Like you're moving in the clinch good. Felipe's got you really, really good in the clinch, dog. It's it's it. All the credit goes to Felipe. Like uh, uh, Alex comes and and works with us and, and starts get, and gets clinch rounds with us. And I was telling him, like you got to work with Felipe. Like that's where you're going to get better. He. He, he he just doesn't stop working. It's 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 like it's work that you I, I, it's hard to replicate. So yeah, the, the, for anyone that hasn't fought Muay Thai and someone that has an actual clinch, fighting in a clinch is like completely draining, and uh, it's a lot of work. There's no. It looks like you're resting in the in the clinch. It's not like boxing. You're definitely not rest, resting in a Thai clinch for sure. Especially, uh, I got to give credit to Sean Doyle and uh, and Tony Viscomi too. They're both savages in the clinch too. So. I get a lot of working with them, and yeah, I've I've gotten fucked up by them a lot. So uh, I hope, say, hopefully I learned something. 
Tony and Keith have the two best clinches that I've I've experienced in here. I haven't really I haven't done any tie rounds with Felipe, so obviously I, I haven't felt that. But uh, I know Tony Viscomi is a monster in the clinch, and I know Keith is too. Uh, both those guys, and they're monsters in different ways. Like Tony is super strong and technical, and Keith is super super technical. So it's like two different worlds too. Like you were Tony, you're like, oh god, my neck, and then you're Keith, you're like, why am I on the floor? Like what's going on? You know, it's like. Two completely different styles, but they're both very good in clinch. Yeah, Keith is good. I didn't know he was that good until I got around him with him. I was like, damn. <laughs> it's because his butt is so big, dude. Like, he's got this giant butt, and it's so – like, his butt and his quads are so big. Like, all his weight is in his hip and his, his thighs. So, like, when he moves you, it really moves you because he doesn't, he doesn't swing with his arms. He uses his whole body, dude, and his legs are so strong. Like, that quad butt area is so strong. When he turns you, do it like it, it floors you. Like it's very, very powerful. And I didn't mean it like a homo way, but like it, like his, his, he's so strong in his legs. That, and no, I know. I don't, I'm, amazing. I'm, I'm just, just trolling you. I know. I'm just messing around. <laughs> <laughs> I, I realized when I said it how bad it sounded. I was like, oh, I didn't mean it like that. I was like, what? And I, was, I was like, damn, I sound like a girl. But no, he's super strong. And I'm, uh, and I had a lot of experience with him in the clinch too. He's very frustrating to go with um, just because of his turns are so effortless. If you talk to him, tell him uh, I want to get some more working with him. I've been trying to work yeah. with him. I'm fighting on his promotion. You might as well help him get a little better, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm sure he'll watch this. I'll, I'll tag him in. I already did tag him in, so uh, hopefully he's watching. And uh, uh, definitely, they, they spar on Saturday, Saturdays at 1 over at Booma. Uh, Keith's not there all the time, though. I don't know when he's there or when he's not there. Uh, I was going up there with my guys that were fighting on FCP when they were going up there. But uh, I haven't been up there in a little bit. Uh and then you came and kicked me in the head too, so that was pretty nice. <laughs> well, uh, we'll, we'll keep we'll keep the story about when we first fired under under wraps, unless you want. Yeah, to... no, we don't need to talk about that. We can talk about little, uh, little we can talk about <laughs> we can talk about you kicking me in the head. The face of WNY MMA, Mr. Todd Banks. WNY Muay Thai, maybe. When are we gonna get you in MMA? Uh, after Worlds, after Worlds, I'll make the jump. Heck yeah, dude, that's pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. I can't wait to see that. Uh, Aiden, you had a very impressive fight at FCP. I watched your fight, man. Woo! Man, were you guys throwing down. That was a great fight, sir. You have really come a long way as well. And Brandon Hay, too, uh, at the FCP. I don't know if you guys saw Brandon's fight, but, uh, man, Brandon's like, I was playing a midget song for him in the locker room. He's so short. I, I didn't mean to be offensive with it. But, uh, like, he had a comeback from behind victory. He said that he was going to get an arm bar at two two minutes and 45 seconds of the second round. And he ended up getting a choke, like, I think 49 or 50. I don't know how long. But he ended up getting a choke in the same round. He said he was going to get submissions. So uh, it, it's still going on, man. Uh, Brent Hayes is a pretty, pretty savage dude. Yeah. Good, good win against a good opponent. Mm -hmm. So I have to uh, ask you about your head kick. So I've been to uh, – Two of your fights where you straight blasted someone in the head where it looked like a baseball bat, sounded like a baseball bat, hitting a guy in the head, and both the guys just looked at you and blinked. Um, do you think there's something wrong with your leg? Maybe it's like made of like plastic or something? Or I, I don't feel like that because when you hit me, it hurts really bad. But I just watched you kick uh, the honey badger in the face, like straight shin to the face. And, um, man, he just like blinked at you. And then uh, the other dude in Vermont, you kicked him in the face. He did a little bit more and blink at you, but he didn't fall down either. What's going on, man? Why? When you gonna fight a guy that doesn't have a football helmet for a head? I don't know. Maybe it's a maybe it's the angle, or maybe I'm not setting him up enough, or like walking him into it enough. But man, I don't, I don't know. I'm I'm trying really hard to figure it out though. <laughs> yeah, but when you hear a sound, like it's not like a a slap. It's like a thud. So you know, like when it's a slap and a kick, you're like maybe they don't fall down. When you hear a thud, it sounds like a baseball hitting like a, a I don't know, like a person. <laughs> it doesn't sound like like a, a slap on your foot. Like your hips into everything. Like I think these dudes are just maybe a little bit brain dead that you're hit. No offense, uh, uh, any of those. Not, no offense, Brett. Don't beat me up. But uh, you definitely got a hard ass head, dude. And uh, the other dude in uh, Vermont has a hard head too. And dude, like I I can't wait to see you get a knockout with a head kick. It's coming. I don't, I don't want to jinx myself, but that'd be nice. That'd be cool. Yeah. 
So you're taking on Richard Zeng. Uh, he actually fought out of your gym a long time ago. I don't know if you ever got any rounds with him. Yeah, a uh, bunch what of do you rounds, know yeah. about him? Yeah. So every Friday we used to spar at the um, Eastern Hills location before they closed. Uh, right before the time where, when Felipe came. I think that's kind of when I stopped. So about three years. Um, I wouldn't say we got a lot of work in, but every Friday we get a couple sparring rounds in. Uh, so I have a general idea about how he fights, but it, it, those are MMA rounds. So, yeah. Um, and I, that was three years ago. So I don't know how much his game has changed. Uh, my game has, has changed a lot since then. Uh, yeah, it's hard to say. It's a different sport. It's a different sport. Yeah, I can certainly say in three years, your game has completely changed. You went from being like an average fighter to like top of the food chain amateur. Um, you really, you like had a meteoric rise up to the top. Um, and I don't know what he's been doing for three years. He's been, uh, been kind of like he went over to Spar during COVID. I don't know what he did much during COVID. I haven't really trained with him since COVID. I used to train with him a lot too. Uh, I remember sparring with him though, and he's so long. And that lead left hook, he throws that left hook, and he gets so far back. Like I, I can't even kick him when he's that far back. So um, you're a little bit taller than me. I don't know how your experiences are with him. How do you think you're going to be able to deal with his range? So he, he's a good fighter. He's been doing this a long time. So it'll, it's going to be, it's going to be difficult to say the least. I, I, I got to see, see what he, what the looks are see how he's moving but i'm i'm anticipating to try to keep the range and work that hook that's what i've seen in the mma um yeah i don't know i don't know i'm gonna try i'm gonna try my best though that's that's for sure <laughs> yeah hopefully he doesn't come out southpaw he's got like jab cross like he's totally completely different fighter uh we don't know because i i don't really know too many people that have been trained with him either um i, I think he's fighting on a spot that's where he's training jiu-jitsu out of so they yeah. have a. Uh, uh, a unique they have crowd maga there so i'm not really sure like uh how much he's sparring no like his stand-up was pretty it was getting pretty crisp right as covid hit and i haven't really trained with him since covid i mean it's been a really long time so uh yeah. i was i don't know how much you've been getting in with him but yeah no i haven't i haven't in the last three years i would love to to know like what kind of work he's been getting in and with who and all that that'd be nice information but uh, yeah i'm just gonna Try to prepare for everything, I guess. Yeah, it'd be crazy. He comes out. He's been. I've been training in Thailand. He's got a super good tan. <laughs> Keith's been setting me up this whole time. I knew it, man. I knew yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Lived in Thailand. So he, he went over for COVID. He's been over there the whole time. Oh, He's been God. training really hard. No, don't say that, man. I'm not oh, ready for that. <laughs> maybe you are. You're top of the food chain, dog. You're uh, you're about ready to be fighting those guys, man. You're like five and zero. Oh. So, uh, like, you need some steps up in competition. That's why you're, you know, you're fighting for the title. Like, you you don't need to put yourself down anymore now. Like, you, you've you gone on defeated in five fights, and you've fought some tough guys, man. Um, Appreciate don't that. ever put yourself down. Appreciate that. You just, Thank you. Yeah, you're ready for those challenges, dude, and you should believe in yourself. Like, I believe in you, and I'm super pumped to see this fight. I I think this fight is going to be super exciting. I, I don't know how you're going to deal with this range. I'm excited to see um, I do know that he's not going to get tired. How's your cardio? Uh, you know, you like to tell me about that, but <laughs> I do. I've always been confident in my in my cardio, so <laughs> I'm feeling good about it. <laughs> not, not a, now your fights don't last long enough to find out if your cardio is good or not. <laughs> I know. You ran him too quick. I, I, I don't know how cardio is. He knocks everybody yeah. out now. <laughs> Hope, if, if, if it starts getting bad, hopefully I can end it. We'll see. Yeah. I know that he uh, he doesn't come out very fiery. I mean, you're going to come out a little bit faster than him, but his pace is not going to change in all three rounds. Or, or, are you fighting three or five? Five. Five. In all five rounds. I don't think his pace is going to change too much. Um, I think he's going to have that. He's a little bit slow at the start of the fight. By the end of the fight, like, you know, usually he's fighting the same pace or faster than the, the guys who's fighting because he doesn't slow down at all. He fights at a pace that he can regulate the whole time. Yeah, he's good at managing the, the tank, huh? He's not. He's not really. Pu and what you've seen, he, he wasn't really pushing the tank too much. Yeah, uh, I've seen him fight twice, and I've seen him spar a whole bunch, and I've never seen him like really look tired. Uh, maybe I've seen him look tired in wrestling practice, but I've never seen him look tired like doing stand up. Yeah, um, he definitely get tired on the walls like doing wrestling, but uh, I don't. I haven't seen him tired in stand up. So 
I'm, I'm very interested to see how this this battle goes for me and how he deals with the damage because you're going to inflict damage on him and I'm not sure he's going to inflict that much damage on you in opening rounds. You know, I can't see him like really. You're like pretty slick. You're a lot harder to hit than. I mean, it looks like it's hard to hit you, but it uh, it doesn't look like it's hard to hit you, but it is. You like you slightly move your head just enough, man. Like I, I got some rounds in with you when I was really pushing the pace too, and I like I was pretty impressed until you got really really tired. It was hot though. We had the heat on, and uh, it was a little bit gross in there. I understand. That was that was awesome. We got to do that again. <laughs> yeah, dude. Hopefully, uh, we had um. Uh, Armani stopped in today and we got some rounds in too. So, JT's guys, he's gonna come back next Sunday too. Uh, he's getting ready to go overseas and fight in that K1 kickboxing uh international fight thing, prize yeah. K. So, uh, he's trying to get a bunch of work in. So, if you come Sunday, it'd be good some uh good work. Yeah, I'll come, I'll come through a ton. Uh, we aspire for class starts at three, so whatever, whatever time I want to come. Yeah, for sure. I'll definitely try to pull up, make that for sure. Yeah, cool. Are you going down to uh to fights in Saratoga? I'm not, but I am. I'm. I'm counting down the the days for that fight. Those fights, man. I can't wait. Yeah, I will be down there calling the fight, so I'll be down there for that 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 show too. Uh, I was gonna say we ride ride down and back together, and then we go right spark. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice. I might take yeah. you up on that. I'll let you know on that one. Yeah, yeah if you're coming back, we'll uh, we'll come back with spar after, and then uh, keep me awake to get home. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. What is it going to mean if you win that K4 title? So I I try to stay pretty even about it. I don't I try not to get too high or too low and try to stay here. Uh it would it wouldn't mean a lot to me. I'd be lying if I said it didn't for sure. Um it's a good it's a good fighter too. It's not I I know I'm not going to say any names, but I know I've seen some promotions put on some, you know, title fights that, you know, weren't exactly that good, but um, yeah, it would it definitely would mean a lot for sure. I think uh, I hope it gets you to the point where you really believe in yourself. When I was talking, like I always been in Thailand training, I really expect you to say like none of that matters. You know, like I don't think you realize how far you've really come. And uh, most of the guys I have on this podcast are really braggadocious, and they're like, uh, you know, they really build themselves up. And like you're just a very level-headed guy, but um, your skill level is very high, dude. You're undefeated. You fought some tough dudes. And um, you made some of them look not very good. And no offense that. to people, no offense to the people that you're fighting, but that's that's a good, good feather in your cap, man. Like, so believe in yourself. Like, Keith don't give anyone title fights, dude. You know, there's not been too many of them. There's like well, one well, show. Well, you know what it is is um, I, well, first of all, I'm I'm extremely confident. I'm extremely confident always. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to end up on a poster. I don't need. I don't need. Uh, me talking crazy about uh, about Rich, be like, yeah, I'm gonna go smoke this guy, and then the the clip is of him of me getting knocked out. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go clip to... that right now. I'm gonna go smoke <laughs> there. I'm gonna clip that and post it right now. <laughs> but hopefully, it's you knocking the guy out. Um, I, I don't mean it quite like that, but I, I just think like you you don't take enough credit for where you're at in your career. I I really do think that you're an amazing fighter and you really come a long way. Thank and you. I like I like the fact that you're humble, but don't be too humble. Like exude that confidence too, because it's really easy for them to look over you and you're like, ah, I don't know, you know, or like, yeah, I'll give them my best. Be like, no, I'm gonna win that tough, you know. Like just the way that you you carry yourself sometimes. I didn't learn this until too late in my career. I just I was like very much like you. I was like, ah, whatever, I'll just fight the guy, you know, like don't matter. But uh, you have to really like let everyone know who you are, because I see when you fight, you're not unconfident. You know what I mean? It's just the way that you're presenting yourself. You you have a lot of confidence when you fight, and uh, it's well earned confidence. And you have confidence in the locker room. You're not all scared, like oh, what's going on? You know, like you're like I'm gonna do this, or what if he does it? Like your your mind's active in the back, so um, sure. It, it's not like it's fake confidence, it's it's real. You know, and if you say that and then you lose, so what? You're gonna if you lose, the loot loss is the hard part anyways. So if you say something else like I'm gonna beat him, and then you lose, like what's what's the difference? It doesn't really matter. You know, either way, there's a highlight of you losing. So, true, it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> That's the worst part. Like, you don't feel bad about what you said. You feel bad about losing. But you know, hopefully, we never run into that spot. Hopefully, you go your whole career and you never lose. Yeah, it'd be nice. But no, mm -hmm. I, I no. But seriously, I do appreciate you saying that. I spend a decent amount of time, kind of, uh, just thinking about where where to be mentally, and and especially in these these conversations, just how, like how much. 
how much, uh, like you said, braggadocious should I should I exude versus humility? So, I, yeah. it's it's something that I'm I'm still I've only been fighting for two years, so I'm still trying to figure out where I fall on that. You know. Yeah, I, th- I think you have to get to the point where you're not something that you're not pretending to be something you're not. But it's okay to be confident. You don't have to be like, ah, oh, you know, you can be like, I'm going to win. Yeah. And just, you don't have to brag about it, but just be very um, authoritative and uh, and confident in, you, in what you're saying. Because, dude, like, you're, you should be. You're 5 0. You're fighting for the title in K4. It doesn't get too much better than that, dude. Like, you're, you're on the rise. You know, and then you, when you're 6 0, you're a K4 champ. Like, that's a lot to talk about, man. You should be super proud to be K4 champ. Uh, Keith has gone out of his way to make sure all his champions are like some of the best fighters around. You, there's not one K4 fighter that won a title that, that sucks or that couldn't fight with any champion in any organization around here. So Agreed. it's a huge thing. You know, it's, it's not, it's not anything but, but the best that fight for the titles. Agreed. You can go down the line too. They're all good. Yeah. Not one of them. Most of them either they defend the title or they turn pro. There's, there's been like not, not much else besides for that, you know? So, like it doesn't get better than that, and that's that's where you you're you're on that cusp right now. If when you're the champion, that's going to be you too. You know, like sure. you're you're going to be one of the best in the area if you win that title. So like that's the way you should carry yourself. You know, absolutely, that, and yeah. that's the way I carry myself in, tra- in training every, every time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's the way you carry yourself in the back. It's the way you carry yourself at the venue. It's the way you carry yourself in in real life. That's not on this video conference call or whatever like it's the way that you are when we talk when we hang out like all that is who you are you know just be you there's nothing wrong with being you just be the person you are and that's either some people are going to hate it and so what fuck them you know you're not doing this for anyone but you do you're the one that steps in the cage you're the one that trains hard makes all the sacrifices takes the damage to your body gives up work gives up relationship time uh, it's great that you train your girl, but I'm sure that's still times where she'd rather go do something besides for like, oh, let's go to a sweaty gym that's a thousand degrees and I got the heat on. I'm sure she'd rather do a lot of other things than come to my stinky gym. Uh, like, so you can get a couple of rounds in before you go and kick some guy in the liver and, and end him. You know, like, yeah. but those are all the sacrifices that you make to be who you are. So it's okay to be proud of those sacrifices. Absolutely. Yeah. So just be you, dude. Like, that would be my best advice to you. I appreciate that. I'll All take right. that to heart. Yes. So my dude is going to be fighting. Uh, I have a clip right here. Richard Zhang. And the fight is going to be August 3rd. And as you can see, uh, I guess you really can't see, but Todd looks super serious. And Richard's much taller than his picture shows. Uh, he's a very tall guy. And to if you get tickets, you can go right to this website right here. Uh, I'll clip it in the the comments too, but when you go and get this, uh, the tickets, there's going to be a little drop down and you can put in K4 banks, Todd will get credit for the ticket sale. So uh, it'll help him out and get a small percentage. Uh, these guys don't make a lot of money. So anything that you can help the fighters with, uh, when you buy tickets, make sure you're putting K4 banks and then Todd will get credit for the ticket. And uh, he'll make a couple bucks. Todd's like, yeah, do it. Please. <laughs> do it now, as K-Man's <laughs> Corner would say. Um, what do you think the fight is going to be like? What's your prediction for the fight? It's it's difficult to say. He, he's got the the information advantage because he, I've been active in the last six months. So he's got, he, he's got three fights. Uh, the one's not on YouTube, but he's got two of my last fights to go off of. I haven't seen him move, and I've never seen him fight Muay Thai, so it's very difficult to to say. I I expect him to, to use his length, use his range. Um, everyone says he comes out with a slow pace. I don't want to go. I don't want to expect that. And you know, he he throw, he throws a wrench in there, and I'm not prepared. So I'm I'm going to be prepared for any kind of fight. And uh, and hopefully, hopefully, yeah, hopefully I make the right reads, make the and and you know get get it out get it done yeah so like it sucks for you because like for your stuff people can just go buy the pay-per-views and they can watch your fights you know um this is a the good thing about pay-per-views and this is why i like uh 
I think people should have to pay to see the other guys fight. Like, I don't like when uh, the organizations put them on YouTube for free because, like, number one, it makes my job as a coach very easy. I, I, I personally like it as a coach, but I, I wouldn't like it as a fighter. As a coach, I love I can just go look up the guy's name on YouTube. There's, like, four fights. I'm like, all right, good. I'll watch these ones. Uh, but, like, when uh, Derek fights someone from 24-7 or, you know, Derek's one of the only guys that, I, like, I really research because uh, he's a pro, so, like, I spend money to do it. But I have to, I have to go to their pay per view. I have to subscribe to their pay per view to like watch his guys fights, you know. And uh, like I think that's a good way because not every amateur is going to spend the money to uh, to get the pay per views to watch it. And um, I kind of like the pay per view model for the fights too because then at least uh, it gives a promotion some money back too, and it makes your fights hard to see. But as when you're trying to sell your fights, it sucks for you guys sometimes too because you can't be like, oh man, here's my fight, you know. Uh, yeah. So it's like a. a, a like it's good and bad, but I, I think it's good for like the up and coming fighters. Yeah, it's good marketability wise, but it's bad in terms of the the X and the X's and O's. Yeah, exactly. Like um, actually, it's reverse. It's good to hide X and the O's because you can't see a fight, but it's bad because it's hard to market yourself. Right. So, but yeah, yeah, and I realize, yeah, yeah. But uh, I I think it's great, and uh, K four has all the fights. So if you want to go back, you can listen to me and Ben and Ray talk about them. You can just go to k4fighting.tv, and then all the fights are there. So you can go back and pay Keith and uh, go watch him. So uh, help out Keith and help everybody else out, and then that's how they can uh, watch Todd Banks fights. Hell yeah! <laughs> that's the way you do. You got to pay that money. You you should get paid that money to see Todd Banks anyways, because those fights are amazing. Um, <laughs> when I say he comes out slow, I don't mean like his punches and kicks are slow. I just mean like he's not pushing the pace. So like, right. he's not going to come out like sluggish. He's, he's going to be like throwing hands fast and the kicks are fast. It's not like his, his kicks and punches are fast. It's just he's not looking to push the pace. He's just coming out to – like he's like a smart fighter, so he's trying to see what you're doing, you know. For um, sure. So don't think – he's not – his hand speed's not slow. His kicks aren't slow. Um, don't don't underestimate him. He's like uh, – he's a serious guy, man. He's super yeah. smart too. You know, I'm absolutely not underestimating him even a little bit. I'm taking I'm taking him extremely seriously, but I'm, I also don't want to say too much on the podcast because, uh, yeah, I don't I don't I don't need him knowing exactly what I'm thinking either. <laughs> yeah, I got you. He's probably watching because we were all in that chat earlier. I was trying to get all you guys together. I appreciate you doing this last minute, by the way, too. Uh, Ray <laughs> usually books our podcast, and he didn't get anyone for today. And I was like, I'll get I'll get I'll try and get the fighters today. Uh, so I, I reached out to you guys, and uh, like it's a busy day for me because I got a lot of stuff going on at the gym today. But I, I appreciate you reaching back and. Uh, uh, Richard reached back too. I, I definitely want to get all the title fights on Caveman's Corner. Um, you guys deserve all the accolades, and I want to like promote the fight too. I mean, this is a great fight. Um, this is a great fight for fans of fighting. I want to say it that way. Um, a lot of people like the fights where you see lots of wild haymakers and like a, a battle of craziness. This is going to be a real technical battle. Uh, you've really come along technically, and Richard's real technical. I mean, we might see knockouts, and we might see a lot of violence, but it's going to be technical violence. It's not going to be a slugfest, I don't think. I, I, I think so, too. I think I agree with that. Yeah. And uh, I've never seen Richard fight with elbows. Mm, that's a good That's a good point. Uh, I, I can't say I've seen you fight fight with elbows where it wasn't a training situation. <laughs> I landed one in my last fight. I landed one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I seen you uh when we spar I, I seen your elbows. I know your elbow game is not not like it looks in the fight. So I don't want to like spoil too much because it's inside footage, but I realize that your elbow game is better than we've seen. And uh, I want the fans to know that a little bit. And uh, you clinch is dangerous, man. Like dangerous, dangerous. Appreciate that. I gotta give yeah. I gotta give credit to Sean to Sean Doyle for that, man. He's he's the he's the elbow king of Buffalo. Yeah, dude, those elbows he threw, like that was so crazy in his fight. Oh my god. <laughs> this dude goes into fights. He's I'm not throwing anything else but elbows. It's just straight elbows. <laughs> dude, and the worst thing was they're throwing these elbows back and forth, and Doyle's landing like seven to one. But he's the one that's bleeding. So yeah. Like, man, I was like, I was in the, I was like, well, I was on the commentary. I'm like, man, maybe Doyle should stop throwing elbows because he's the one that's leaking. And the other dude's got this giant hematoma on his head. 
But Doyle's like leaking, leaking. And he's so white, dude. That red's all over him. I'm like, man, he might have lost that round because he looks terrible. And uh, like that's I think that's Doyle's biggest weakness is his body. Uh, I think you gotta get him out tanning or get him some melatonin. I don't know what you gotta do to get him a little bit darker. But uh he's so white, every time he gets hit, he's immediately red. And then when he bleeds, like he's just it's so contrasted to his white skin that it looks terrible. I'm gonna pass this on to him. Maybe that's something he needs to work on this camp. Yeah, yeah. He's gotta get out tanning more this camp. That's his fight is already good enough. He doesn't need to make that any better, but he definitely needs to uh, that's good. Definitely needs to get out in the sun a little bit. Spend a week Maybe. at the beach this year you can. That's all you got to do. You guys are going to have to do uh, like a uh, uh, clinch work at the beach instead of uh, in the gym. That'd be nice. That'd be cool. Yeah. It, no, it sucks, dude. So, like, we've done it before. You get the sand on your hands, and as soon as that, hand, that sand is, like, grinding in your neck, it is awful. Don't do clinch uh-huh. work on the beach. Hit pads. Don't do clinch work. It's, it's the worst. I'll take, do, I'll take your word for it. Yeah, do beach wrestling too. That's all also awful. Um, the sand is very abrasive and it sucks very much. Um, it's not the best for training. I'm not much of a wrestler, but uh, when I like wrestling by a caveman, don't 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 clinch and don't wrestle on the beach. That's that's my my great advice for you. Caveman's right. corner advice of the day. Yeah, caveman for present 2024. Uh, I. I'm, I am going to, once again, enter the race. I will make another funny video. Uh, I'm working on it right now. Force can put it together for me. But uh, if you want to take your right and vote and vote for someone that's not 107 years old, you can write in Cape Man. I promise to suck less. And uh, whoever bribes me, I'm just going to, I'm going to take a bribe still. But I will tell you, um, I will tell you who's bribing me. Is this the main event? I do not know the full ca- the full card yet, Phil. Phil is also fighting on this card, and he's uh, on the team eight years, and he's fighting someone from Jackson Winks. So uh, that should be a very interesting fight as well. Um, I'm excited to see Phil make his return to the cage. Um, he's fighting a debut guy, but the debut guy is from Vegas, man. That's crazy. Uh, that's going to be a battle. I know. I don't want to say anything too much to Phil, but I know how much Phil's improved. Uh, Phil's been popping in every now and then. Uh, everything looks better. Uh, I'm sure you've got a lot of work with him. I'm sure he's come a long way since he started sparring with you. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, so Phil's on this card as well. I'll be doing a write-up for Phil. Hopefully I get him on the podcast. I know a couple other fights that are uh, on, on the card. I'm sworn to secrecy still. But uh, I'm excited to see some of them. Uh, Todd Banks may know some more of the fights on the card as well. And uh, I'm not allowed to say them until they drop. But uh, other people can say them. <laughs> I get in trouble, Keith, but I, I don't control you guys. So anything that you guys drop online is all right. I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. But I am looking forward to Phil's fight, though. Yeah, Phil's fight is going to be uh, – uh, a great one. He's, he was trying to get on another car. He got injured. He had a withdraw, and now he's going to be back in his fight, and hopefully he's all healed up and ready to go. Uh, I'm excited to see that. I'm excited to see you fight too, man. I can't wait to see you and Richard go. I think this is probably going to be the most – this is going to be the, probably the most technical Muay Thai fight on the car. I know another guy that's fighting, so I'm not sure it's going to be the most technical fight on the card, but uh, this will be the most technical stand-up fight on the card. For sure. Um, I know MMA fight I'm super excited to see, and I can't wait. It might be uh, one of my favorite MMA matchups in uh, K4 history. And uh, Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like this one a lot. It's like a striker versus a grappler. Uh, I'm sure it'll be announced soon, but uh, I can't wait to, to see this one. This one's got me like, ah, oh, because MMA is my jam, man. Like, I love Muay Thai, and I think your fight's going to be super technical and super great. But I love, like, MMA is so much that can happen. And it's, just, it's, it's my thing, man. I love Muay Thai. It's my second favorite sport. But uh, I'm, I'm excited to see this one. And when we're off air, we can talk about this one a little bit because I'm sure you know who I'm talking about. But um, I'm super excited for this one. So we got your prediction. It's going to be uh, Todd Banks by. Damn, come on, K, man. You're trying to you, – I can't give the whole game plan out. Yeah. I will, you, don't have to, you can say uh, – can I Todd say Banks this? by finish and whatever. I don't even have to say what the finish is or decision or whatever you think. 
Uh, so, all right, I, I guess I can say this pretty safely. Uh, you never wanted to go go to the judges, so that's going to be my goal. Um, if if it's not there, it's not there. My my ultimate goal is to win the fight. <laughs> You're very that's, good at giving no answer. That is the very that's the politically correct answer. Yeah. <laughs> Ideally, you know, you like go to the judges. Hate. So what? like your whole your whole thing is awesome. We gotta be like Brandon Hay. Not only does Brandon Hay call what he's gonna do, he does it every time. That's all you gotta do, and then people will love you forever. Yeah, dude, we all can't be Nostradamus like Brandon though, man. Brandon Hay fought three fights. All three times he called the submission and the round. And the first time he got right within a second. The second time he was off a minute. This last time he was off like almost two full minutes. So. Like, all right, but do you agree with this though? It's it's a lot easier to say I'm just gonna I'm a better grappler than him. I'm gonna I'm gonna win by this submission, than me say hey I'm gonna end the fight with a the right hook, right? What do you think about that? I don't know because to be honest with you, he called submission over a guy I thought was a better grappler than him, and okay. then he submitted him. So my argument is I could execute that right hook, right? Mm-hmm. And he, it doesn't end the fight, though. He could, he could just be tough mm-hmm. as nails and just keep yeah. fighting. You could say right head kick. <laughs> <laughs> and you should have two two wins by right head kick, but you don't have those two wins by right head kick. I, I promise you hit me like you hit either one of those two guys, I would still be unconscious probably. <laughs> because God damn it, Brett. Thanks a lot, Brett, if you, if you see this, man. Yeah, that Brett Valone one, dude, like there's a picture of it. That shin is like directly across his eyeballs and his nose. I don't know how. I don't know how he just like didn't die. Like, I don't know what you know about uh, Logan in Saratoga, but he's a uh, he's he's uh, I don't know the religion, but he he believes in Valhalla and uh, like he's yeah. uh, like in the old god. So he his whole thing is he he wants to die an honorable death, so he embraces pain. So when it, when I landed the head kick, he must have just enjoyed it. I don't know. Yeah, he he's, saw he crazy. saw his god because that's a lot of pain, man. Oh my god, <laughs> that was shout a crazy to him. fight. Yeah, he's he's, yeah. he's 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 tough. I'm looking forward to his fight this weekend against Malik. It's gonna be a good yeah. fight. I know. I can't wait for that one. I'm calling that one too. So it'll be uh it'll be good to see. Um, so we talk about uh, winning the title. What do you do for work, man? So um, I'm I actually have an, inter- an interview tomorrow at uh, UB with their in their finance department. Nice. So wish me wish me luck with that. Good luck, man. Holy cow, that's awesome. Yeah. So um, yeah. If I um. If I get that, that's what I'll be doing. I'll be in an office at, at, at UB all day and training all right. in my free time. That's awesome. I hear Todd Banks got selected for the ISK Team USA. Cats out the bag. Oh, why didn't you start with that? That's awesome, man. I told you, switching to MMA after Worlds. That's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, I'm I didn't I'm know you got selected. I thought you just uh, – for some reason, I thought they were just looking for everyone. I didn't know like they they pick you. That's so cool. Yeah, I talked to uh, I talked to Giuseppe at um at, at the FCP card a few weeks ago. Um, yeah, I I haven't stopped thinking about that. It's gonna be in Austria in October. Uh, yeah, I can't I can't wait I can't wait for that. That's awesome, dude. Um, he he hooked me up too at the fights. Uh, we had a uh, my guy didn't make weight, and then he was laughing with me the whole time. Uh, we had a we had a good uh. Good time at the the fights the other weekend. Um, I love the ISK guys too. Um, we got two good commissions in the area too, and the two commissioners are the best. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I want to get those these guys on the podcast together and have them like argue. I think <laughs> that's magic. I think it, yeah, I think it'd be pretty amazing. I think it'd be such a cool, such a cool podcast. Bring them both on. I don't think they can do it, but. I think that would be the best podcast ever. They can trash each other like, oh, camera sucks. ISK sucks. But they're like, <laughs> they're both cool and they're both trying to look out for you guys. I, uh, no bad blood for me, for anyone. I got to fight for them both. So I got to be super nice to both of them guys because the commissioners make everything happen. We love you guys. We love the commissions too. Absolutely. Yeah. He's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, so, man, I hope you get that job. That'd be amazing for you. Thank I, you. Uh, That'd be great. Then we don't have to like hawk tickets. Yeah. I'm yeah, cool. we are all on the same mission, man. It's always about you guys. So like commissions working for you guys. We're trying to get you guys out. 
um, everything we're trying to do. So maybe you can stop having to rack some sponsors. You got any sponsors to uh, plug while we're uh, going down this path? I don't, but I'm glad you brought that up because I'm looking for sponsors. So if anyone uh, knows of any sponsors or want to sponsor me for this upcoming fight and for Worlds, uh, let me know. I'm looking. Yeah, let's – um. after the K4 fight, let's get you on and – We'll try and uh, let's try and get all the guys that are going to world. Joe, if you're still on here, let's try and set it up. We'll try and get all the guys that are going to world on here. Maybe we can set up some kind of fundraiser where we can all get together and do something to help raise some money for the whole team. I think that'd be a cool thing to do. That'd be dope. Yeah, and then like I know whatever we raise, I'll help you guys out. I know like how expensive it is to go there. I know I think it's awesome that you're representing the country. So like uh, let's let's make it happen. When you said you got a real job, I was like, oh, man, now he's got to do the trip. He's going to have a real job. Like, it's, real life's going to start soon, man. I know. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy, dude. That's awesome. We will. We're going to set this up for you guys. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah. Like, uh, oh, uh, and since we're talking about sponsors and money and stuff, Caveman's Corner Bonuses will be back at these fights. So, knock out of the night, $100. Uh, fight a night, hundred dollars. Uh, bonus to each guy, and submission a night, hundred dollars. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully there's no submission or knockout, so we can save two hundred bucks, and then just give away the fight of the night. I'm, I'm, <laughs> but uh, there's always a submission and there's always a knockout, so um, we'll uh, we'll be giving away the bonuses. And uh, man, usually it's one of the title fights or close to the main event that that wins. So hopefully, uh, you guys are up for it and. And win it. Hell yeah. I'm, lo I'm looking for that 200 bucks. Heck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you knock on night, fight at night, trying to stack them all. You need submission tonight? <laughs> hey, I'll throw an iron bar in there. I got a, I got a couple stripes in my white belt. Yep. Kelly the night for sure. Gabe Vega. Gabe is the man. Congrats to, to uh, Vega, man, on that, on that title fight. Yeah, dude, he is a... He's something else, man. He just thrown down. I didn't even like worry about protecting himself. I uh there's something you gotta love about a guy like Gabe. Um he's a super serious guy man and uh I talked with him before the fight and he was like in such a good mental space. Even though he stiffed me at the wings, I was like, hey what's up man? He's like oh. I, I know you must have been sucking way good. Um <laughs> so I'm gonna tease him forever for that. But he was super cool after he got some hydration in you. Um I agree Banks is a true problem for anyone across the cage or ring from him. He truly is, and uh, oh, his yeah. head kicks are good, and people underestimate his clinch, and they definitely, definitely underestimate your elbows, dude. Your elbows are, are money. I can't wait to see you slice someone up once you get those elbow pads off. I can't wait, man. I know. I know. After, after Worlds, I'm getting them off. Yeah, you're going to be like Doyle, like just chopping people up, man. There's something wrong with Doyle. You don't know the half, man. You don't know the half. <laughs> you probably do know the half. You, I do know. I've turned you know. it all a long time. So yeah, like, you, you back probably know more good. than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's always been a little bit off, but like in a like in a good way for fighting. Thanks, brother. You're about to be next strap season. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Yeah, I love the community that you guys have built too. I, I know I'm trying to end this podcast, but I every time I'm about to end it, I like have another great. Uh, uh, great thought. Say Banks. Is that your mom, dog? I think that's my cousin. Ah, uh, that's awesome. But, question mark? It's hard to see the picture. It's little on my screen. Yeah. See if it's smaller on the phone. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. Anyway, she sent you some hearts. But uh, the it's amazing the community that you guys have made. Like, the local Buffalo guys are always, like, training together and getting it in. And it's, uh, yeah, it's your cousin. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, it's super amazing to watch you guys grow. Like, you guys are all from different teams, too. Like, he's from Elevation. You're from WNY. You guys get together all over the place. You're training all over. Uh, you guys both train with me at times, like, train at Buma. We, we go all over. And, and I think it's such a good thing for the community that people really started opening up their doors, too. And uh, I think it's a really good thing. Agreed. I'm, I'm trying to get on uh, the Warriors Cup one of these days. I know there's a – competition there so i know they like to kind of shit on us in buffalo so i, I like that that we're working together or or raising a level together and with them because eventually felipe always tells me you know you don't want to just be the best guy in the city but you know you're best guy in the city and then you're the best guy in the state 
in the country than you in, international. He's he always kind of puts that in my head. So yeah, yeah, I think it's good that we kind of stick together as a community and not make it because you know the stigma between like cross training is a pretty big one and it's it's like a, a delicate line. Yeah, there's a different like. I always looked at cross training like this. I think we need to train with each other to get better, but I I don't think we should uh, sacrifice our training partners to do it. So like cross training should happen when it's not your time to train in the gym. You know, like when you guys are training in the gym, that's the time for you and your teammates. And then cross training should happen at a different time. So like when you go train, as long as you're not leaving a teammate, like like that you could be helping your own teammate. Like if there's no no one training at the gym, you should be training and making yourself better. That's your job as a fighter. But it's also your job as a teammate to to make the team better before you help out other people, you know. So it is a little bit of a fine line. But like at the end of the day, all the fighters are uh, pretty much out for themselves. You know what I mean? And it's a small community. And um, I don't know how to say this delicately. Like, like as a gym owner, we're trying to make money. And it's not always in our best interest to have you guys train all over because sometimes we lose people to other gyms. You know, so as a gym owner, as a gym owner, sometimes I'm not happy when my guys cross train because I'm like, man, you could be here helping my team or my gym. But at the same time, as the fight promoter and uh, commentating on these fights and like trying to wear, raise awareness for all the fighters, I see like, I see the community that you guys are building together. And I think that's awesome. And uh, like, so I'm, I'm a little bit torn on it, but I, I do think that cross training is a good thing. Yeah. As long as all your, all my fighters don't leave and go train with you. <laughs> yeah, I doubt that, man. Never that. You're too good. <laughs> yeah. I try to be, man. It's uh it's tough though because like as an owner, you're always you're worried about it, you know, because like all your money comes from it. That's like that's your job. So like you see everyone going to another gym, you're like, oh man, I don't know about that. But yeah. uh like it needs to happen for you guys to get better. And uh, like I, I love that Keith is open and he's open. He opened up the gym for all the guys to go train there. And I like that you guys go around and you train. And like when you train, like you kind of you guys kind of even do it as a team, you know, like so you guys go together and I like I, I love that you guys are always working well together. I like that you took your girl with you when you came over to my gym too. Like I thought that was super cool. And yeah. like, you know, so like even though you both train at the same gym, so like you're cross training together at least, you know, like that's awesome. And that's that's cool things to do, you know. And I don't want to ever try and steal nobody, so it's safe to come train with me and He's not stealing nobody. Dummy Y is not stealing anyone. You know, like um, for a while there, like all the gym owners were losing people because like the gym owners are actively recruiting from each other, and uh, yeah. that was a, that was a problem. And I, I think we're we're all pretty good now. Uh, so one more time, August third, K four fighting, fighting for the championship. The fights are at Buffalo River Works. The uh, doors open at. Five, I believe, and a fight started at six. I'm sorry, I should have researched this a little bit better. Either five and six or six or seven. But uh, get your tickets. You can get them um, right on the K4 website. It's really easy to go to. Uh, they're available at this link right here. Um, I think I can just post it in the chat too. So if you can just click on it in the chat. No, I can't post it in the chat because I put the link to the chat in here. Um, I love a 6 p.m. fight time. Ben Field. Yeah, 6 p.m. is a, a good time because then you can be in and out and then by, be out by the time the night's over. Uh, ben Field will also be calling the fights. You can also go to k4fighting.tv and uh, purchase the pay-per-view and listen to me and Ben Field and Ray Arias. We'll, uh, we'll give the breakdowns of all the fights. That's the best way to watch the fights if you're not going to be there. You should definitely listen to our commentary because it's great. And uh, how about K4 and give them – some more money, which is what we all need. Uh, you can, also, when you buy the tickets, make sure you use promo code uh, K4Banks. That will get Todd Banks, um, Todd Banks, person commentator here, personal commentator <laughs> here. I think you spelled it wrong. Um, that will get uh, Todd the uh, ticket money, that uh, the commission for the tickets, and it will definitely help him out, especially if he doesn't get that UB job that he's going to get. Uh, crush it tomorrow. Uh, so man, you could have a good month. You could start yeah. a new job, be a new title holder, and then uh, go to worlds. Yeah, be a, be a, become a champ, a local champ, and then a world champ. That'd be nice. And and a new job. 
What's up, what, what's up by the way, Ben? Dude, uh, thank you for getting out of the pool. So we started the podcast, and uh, he was in the pool, but he got out before uh, before we really went live. But uh, he was in this pool when I first we first started this joint. It was pretty sweet. I thought we were going to do the whole thing in the pool. That would be pretty baller. I was thinking about it, but uh, the way the camera was set up, it just it wasn't working out. <laughs> Ben's so stony, he doesn't know what's going on. That's kind of how he is. All right, man, make sure you guys get K4. Hopefully, I'm with future champion Todd Banks. We will have his opponent, Richard Zhang, on next week. He promised me, so we'll get him on. And then uh, here, have some stars. Ah, oh, thanks, Ben. You're the best. All right, we're going to get out of here, and we're going to have a quick talk off the air so we can talk about that fight I want to talk about. I want to tell everybody, but I can't promise Keith I won't. So uh, we'll see you guys soon. See you back next week, and I'll hopefully raise back. Rick, like, busts his eardrum, so it's like pulling out blood out of his ear. It's pretty gross. <laughs> <laughs> He's a dummy. His doggy hurt him. All right, we're out. Peace. See you guys.